Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on graphing inequalities in two variables. Our objective is going to be to graph linear inequalities on the coordinate plane and to solve inequalities by graphing. So let's start off with a nice xy axis here. And we might as well draw in a line. Now, what that line is going to be is called a boundary when we're dealing with linear inequalities. Now, that boundary breaks up our plane. We have a half of the plane down here. And that's actually a half plane, and we have half of a plane up here. And that too is called a half plane. Now sometimes that boundary is included in the solution and sometimes it's not. So when the boundary is included, the solution is a closed half plane. I got my apostrophe in the wrong spot there, or my dash. However, when the boundary is not included, the solution is a, a or an open half plane. Now, some different vocab here. You know, a boundary and half planes and closed half planes and open half planes, but we can relate those to a little bit of what we know. But as we do that, let's look at how we graph linear inequalities. Step one, graph the boundary. We're going to do that just like we've graphed linear equations. Now, we will use a solid line when the inequality contains less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So that's our closed half plane. And we will use a dashed line when our inequality is just less than or greater than, and that's our open half plane. I mean, think back to just regular inequalities, just on a regular number line. Sometimes you had an open circle, and you shaded it, and that was just less than or greater than. And sometimes you had the closed circle, and you shaded but that was for your greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. It's the same type of concept here. When you have the or equal to, you'll have a solid boundary line, just like you had a solid dot. You'll have a dashed line when it's less than or greater than, just like you had an open circle for those number lines. So it's very similar, similar concept, it's just a little bit different way of applying it. Now, step two, is going to be to use a test point to determine which half plane should be shaded. And I'm going to leave a hint here for us. 
use zero zero when possible. Makes things much easier to calculate. We'll use zero zero as our test point when possible. So as long as our boundary isn't going through zero zero, we can use zero zero. Now once we determine which half plane should be shaded, we are going to shade the half plane that contains the solution. And I know this is a lot to get us started, a lot of different vocab, a little bit different way of graphing these. It's, we're going to use everything we know about graphing inequalities on just a regular number line and how to graph linear equations and combine them all for this lesson. So let's graph this inequality. 2y minus 4x is greater than 6. Now, in order to do this, just like when we were graphing linear equations, let's go ahead and get this into y is greater than whatever form. Let's solve for y in terms of x. So step one in order to graph this is to get 2y minus 4x is greater than 6 into y is greater than or whatever form. And the way we're going to do this, let's move the 4x to the right side. We'll add 4x to both sides. So that can cancel. And we're left with 2y is greater than 4x plus 6. And now we can divide both sides by 2. And be sure to divide everything by 2. Sometimes a common mistake is we'll only divide the first term by 2 to get the 2x, but accidentally leave that as a 6. So be careful to make sure you divide that 6 by 2 as well, so you end up with y is greater than 2x plus 3. Now, once you get this here, you can choose many different ways of graphing. I'm going to use the 2 as my slope and the 3 as my y-intercept. So if 3 is my y-intercept, that ends up right here. And if 2 is my slope, remember if 2 is my slope, that's the same thing, 2 over 1. So I'm going to rise 2 and run 1. So I'm going to rise up 2 and run 1. Rise 2 and run 1. And I want to make sure I draw points on the other side going down to the left. So I can also go down 2 and to the left 1, which is the same thing as negative 2 over negative 1, since those are technically the same slopes. So again, from here I can go down 2 and over 1. And down 2 and over 1. I'm actually going to draw this out on the whole graph so we get a nice picture of what's going on here. Now, don't automatically draw your boundary in. Look at your inequality sign. We have a just a greater than. So we're going to draw a dashed line here. In between all of these points. So we have our dashed line, we've drawn in our boundary, now we can move on to step two. We want to select the test point. And as I indicated, if we can use zero, zero, let's use zero, zero. It's easier to calculate with. So we're going to use zero, zero as our test point. Now I know we just solved this inequality, but I would encourage you to go back to the original one 2y minus 4x is greater than 6 to test, just in case you made a mistake somewhere in solving. All right? So we're going to stick in the zeros for x and y. So we'll have 2 times 0 minus 4 times 0 is greater than 6. And here's what happens. You get 2 times 0 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. It needs to be greater than 6. We get 0 is greater than 6. 
Now, is that true? Is zero greater than six? Now, that is a false statement. So that means that zero, zero here is not included in the solution, which means all of this is also not included in the solution. That half plane is the wrong half plane, the false half plane, which means everything over here is the correct half plane. In step three then, well, let's shade the correct half plane. And our correct half plane is going to be over here. And those who know me know I am no artiste. So just kind of shade. Don't spend too much time coloring. The math is much more important than coloring. And I'll just stop there. So that is the graph of the inequality 2y minus 4x is greater than 6. Now I do want to go just a little bit more in depth so we understand what it is we're doing here. If I want to just test a few more points here, it's just to show you what this really means, I'm going to pick a point, say, right, right here. Now if I did this correctly, that point, which is, let's see, 1, 2, negative 3, 0. Negative 3, 0 should be true for this inequality. So if I put in 2y minus 4x is greater than 6. If I put in that point, 2 times my y was 0 minus 4 times negative 3 needs to be greater than 6. So I have 0, then a negative times a negative is a positive, 12 is greater than 6, and I get 12 is greater than 6. And that should just be a 6 there. And is 12 greater than 6? Yes. And so any point I pick here will be true for the inequality. Now, what about another, we already did a false point with 0, 0, but what about a false point on the number line? We said that um, we did not shade in the boundary. So if I pick one of the points that is on this number line, say 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I put 2, 7 into this inequality, 2y minus 4x is greater than 6. I would have 2 times 7 minus 4 times 2 would need to be greater than 6, and 2 times 7 is 14 minus 4 times 2 is 8 would need to be greater than 6. And we have 6 is greater than 6. Is that false? Yeah, 6 is not greater than 6. It's equal to, but it's not greater than, which is why we just dash that boundary instead of shading in or filling out the complete line. So I hope that helps a little bit in the detail of why it is what we're doing, what we're doing, and how this graphing inequalities in two variables whole thing really works. So now we have our or equal to example, x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 2. So step one again, is going to be to get this into a graphable form. And that's just a bit sloppy. Let's try that again. x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 2. It's a little better. Let's subtract x from both sides. We're left with 4y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 2. Then divide by 4, and again, everything by 4. So that way you result with y is greater than or equal to, I'm going to write this as a fraction, negative 1 fourth x plus 1 half. Now, little bit more difficult here. My y-intercept is going to be one-half, which is 
right here. And my slope is negative one fourth. So I could say, okay, my slope m is negative one over four. So every time I go down one, I'm going to run four. So again, if I go down one, I'm going to run four. And if I go down another one, I would run one, two, three, four, right to the edge of my graph. Also, if, then if the negative's on the bottom, if I go up one, I go back to the left four. So I can go up one, but back to the left four. And one more time, up one, but back to the left four. And there are the points for my graph. Now, to shade in my boundary, recognize this is an or equal to. So I can actually draw a closed boundary here. Mm. Not the dashed line, but the solid line. Now, step two, test. We're going to use 0, 0 again as our test point. Since it doesn't go through the boundary. And we'll start again with x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 2. We'll start with the original. Put in 0, 0. 0 plus 4 times 0 is greater than or equal to 2. Is 0 greater than or equal to 2? No, that is false. So this half plane is the false half plane, meaning this half plane is the correct half plane. So step three, shade the correct half plane. That's going to be this half plane once again up here. So all of these points that I'm coloring in, including any of the points on the line, are going to be true for this inequality. So if I that's all you need to do in order to solve these inequalities. But I want to take another second here to go, well, why? How does this work? Why does this work? Why are we shading this in? Well, we're saying everything that's shaded in blue, including the boundary, is true. So if I pick a point, and I'm going to draw one right here again, and that's going to be this time 0, 3. I'm going to write that down here. If I go with my original inequality, x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 2, I should expect, if I put in 0, 3, for this to be true. Well, my x is 0 plus 4 times 3 needs to be greater than or equal to 2. 0 plus 12 needs to be greater than or equal to 2. And sure enough, 12 is greater than or equal to 2. So that is a true point, as it should be. Now we filled in our boundary this time, and so if I pick a point on that boundary such as, we'll use that one. That one is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1 half. If I have x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 2, and our x here is 4 plus 4 times negative 1 half, that needs to be greater than or equal to 2. 4 plus, well, 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2, needs to be greater than or equal to 2. And sure enough, 2 is greater than or equal to 2. So it's true. So any point on our boundary is going to be true. And any point in the half plane that we shaded is also going to be true. Any point in the half plane that we did not shade, such as 0, 0, which we've already tested, is not true. So again, I hope that explanation helps a little bit to see why we're doing what we're doing. Now this example is a little bit different. We're going to solve the inequality from this graph. 
and we have 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 7. Notice there's no y, we're just down to one variable here. But we're still going to follow the same steps. So step one is going to be to graph this, but we want to solve it so that we can solve for x. So 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 7. And on this type of example, we're actually going to change this less than or equal to to an equal sign. So we'll have 2x plus 3 equals 7, and let's just solve. Subtract 3 from both sides. 2x equals 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and x equals 2. Now we're going to graph x equals 2 with a solid line here. This is where x is equal to 2. Now step two is still to use zero, zero as a test point. So we'll use our original inequality, 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 7. And we'll just put 0 in. So 2 times 0 plus 3 needs to be less than or equal to 7. And 0 plus 3 needs to be less than or equal to 7. And 3 is less than or equal to 7. So that's true. So we're going to shade in everything here to the left. Now notice our x-intercept here is x equals 2. We had a solid line. And we were true, since 0, 0 was true. So our answer here is simply going to be x is less than or equal to 2. Everywhere where x is less than or equal to 2. Now let's write, solve, and graph an inequality to find a solution for this problem. Ted Word writes and edits short stories for a local newspaper. It takes him about an hour to write an article and about half an hour to edit an article. If Tedward works up to eight hours a day, how many articles can he write and edit in one day? Let's set up two variables first. Let's say that W is going to be our writing variable and that E is going to be our edit or editing variable. We can say that it takes him half an hour to edit, so half an hour per editing job, plus, well, one hour for each writing job, and that that needs to be less than or equal to the eight hours a day that he can work up to. Well, let's just to graph, call our y-axis E and our x-axis W, and let's solve for E. So we're going to do that. We can subtract the W from both sides. And we're left with 1 half E is less than or equal to a negative W plus 8. Then if we multiply everything by the reciprocal of 1 half, which is just 2, I multiply everything there by 2, I'm left with E is less than or equal to negative 2W plus 16. I'm going to graph that. Now I'm going to count up my graph here by 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and might as well go to 18, but no need. My y-intercept here is 16. My slope is negative 2. So that can be negative 2 over 1. So every time 
I rise, it's going down to, I run one. So I will drop down two, and I'll be careful because I'm counting down by two, and I haven't labeled my W's yet, and I'm going to count by twos there as well. Well, nah, let's count those by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now that my axes are different, you definitely have to be careful because my rise, my dropping, I'll drop two, but go over one still puts me there. So just be careful depending on how you label your graphs. Down two takes me to 12, over one, down two, over one, down two, over one, down two, over one. A little song here, down two, over one, down two, over one, down two, over one. Now I have an or equal to, so I can actually draw a solid line here. Now, I could use 0, 0 as a test point here. Might as well just follow the same process that we've been doing. Even though I think you might have a hunch that will be shading towards 0, 0. My original inequality, 1 half e plus w is less than or equal to 8. I put in 0, 0 for those. Well, 1 half times 0 is 0 plus 0 is 0. It's less than or equal to 8, so that's true. So anything here in this time frame is going to be true. Now the line is going to represent his 8-hour day. So he could edit 16 articles, but write none. He could edit 14 articles and write one. He could edit 12 articles and write two, or any number on this line, or any number in the blue here as well. So, and you can pick a point off the line and go, well, here is four, eight, and at the point four, eight, I could say, well, he could write four articles and edit eight or anything, really. There's a lot of other possibilities as well. What if he works a shorter day? What if he, you know, takes a break or could he, say, write two articles and edit six? Well, if you test two six into that inequality of one half e plus w is less than or equal to eight, sure. One half times six plus two needs to be less than or equal to eight, and of course, three plus two is five, and five is less than or equal to eight, so yeah, he could write two articles and edit six. I mean, there's a lot of different possibilities, and they're all displayed on the graph. I know this was a long lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Good luck.